You're watching Alabama football on YouTube. This is our weekly recruiting show. Trey Entity, joined with Andrew Bone, guys, 18 year plus veteran in the industry, best selling author. You can find him on Twitter at Andrew J. Bone. And guys, you're going to want to go, go follow him and turn those notifications on because all kinds of news coming out right now with these visits over the past weekend, recruit visits, um, you know, of course, and some of these top names that we're going to talk about tonight. So, guys, go follow him on Twitter. You follow, be sure to follow us at Bama Insider on Twitter as well. And as we get into the show tonight, guys, hit that like button for me. Get in the comments section and let us know what you think. Now we're going to have a lot of comments tonight about Arch Manning, Eli Holstein, some of these quarterbacks, because you know, Arch Manning was in town this weekend and a lot to talk about with his visit. I want to talk about Eli Holstein, too, though, as we open up the show. Now, Arch Manning shown a lot of interest in Alabama. Alabama more so shown interest in him. A lot of interest in Eli Holstein now as well. So we talk about Arch Manning and kind of his decision. How much is this going to affect Eli Holstein? And what is the timing with all of this now as Arch Manning still somewhat of a wild card in his recruitment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Somebody made a comment last week uh, on the uh, on the comment box that uh, uh, that we're talking about Arch Manning way too much. We need to focus on on other recruits. Uh, but when Art starts taking visits, and uh, and you know he hasn't really taken many visits since last football season. Now he's starting to take visits, so you got to talk about him. He is the number one recruit in the country, and definitely somebody that uh, Alabama fans, at least most of them, want to know about and, and see what's going on in his recruitment. But you know, Arts did visit Alabama this past weekend. Uh, he was in town on Friday, uh, spent about half the day in Tuscaloosa on Saturday, and then went back home to New Orleans. But you know, this is definitely a guy that uh, you know, has high interest in the Crimson Tide. This is his third visit uh, to Tuscaloosa. He was in town last summer, made it back for uh, for a game during the season, now came back for uh, for a spring practice. And you know, the biggest thing about these spring practices is getting – on campus, being around the coaches, being around players, you know, seeing if this is a culture that you fit in with, um, you know, are these coaches that you want to be coached by, you know, you're getting a chance to go and sit down uh, in a meeting uh, with Bill O'Brien and Bryce Young and, uh, you know, Jalen Milrow and Ty Sips and other quarterbacks on the team and, you know, watching how they break down plays and watching, you know, kind of what they like to do uh, in their offense. So, He's getting a chance to do that at, at these other universities as well. So he's trying to figure out exactly which school fits him the best. You know, as far as Alabama is concerned, I think Alabama, you know, certainly feels like they have a you know really strong chance to land him. At the same time, you know, Eli Holstein, who's also from Louisiana, Zachary, Louisiana, is a guy that they absolutely love. You know, they have have had him on campus several times, including twice in the month of March. Uh, visited during the football season, camped at Alabama last summer. You know, they absolutely love Eli Holstein. So these are two guys that they're extremely high on. And even though Arch is obviously such a big name, uh, you know, the number one recruit in the country, a Manning, uh, top quarterback, I don't think Alabama is necessarily going to wait to see what he's going to end up doing. I think they're going to, you know, take whoever decides to commit first. You know, Eli Holstein is a guy that they have evaluated that they have seen in person that they've you know recruited that they've heavily pressed for for you know the last several months I mean really ever since uh, last June even though he committed to Texas A&M uh, shortly after his visit to Alabama Todd staff never quit recruiting him and, and that's I think that's probably a reason why he decided to reopen his recruitment so just because uh, Arch is rated number one in the country uh, don't let that uh, you know uh, blind you from the fact that Eli Holstein is certainly one of the top quarterbacks in the country and certainly somebody that Alabama would love to add. So it comes down to who's going to commit first, who's going to make that decision. Is Eli Holstein going to take more visits? Is he going to stretch it out throughout the summer, maybe take some officials in the fall, or will he potentially go ahead and make a decision sometime this spring or early part of the summer? Now, if he does set up a commitment date sometime soon, I think it's going to be for Alabama. So we'll see what happens with Arch. I, mean, I, I don't think he's in, really in a rush to make a decision. I think he's been enjoying these uh, spring visits and you know really just starting to kind of narrow things down and set up his official visits for, for down the road, uh, whether that's in the summer or in the fall. But will Alabama take both of them? They would absolutely take both of these guys. Are they going to get both of them? Probably not. I don't see any situation where, you know, Holstein's going to jump on board with Alabama, Arch is committed, 
or Arch is going to jump on board uh, if Eli's committed. Obviously, we've seen that before back in 2017 with uh, with Tua and uh, and Mac Jones jumping on, uh, you know, the Alabama commitment list and signing with the tie. But I don't see that happening with Eli and uh, and Arch. It's kind of funny saying Eli uh, and not saying Manning after that. But uh, but you know, this is definitely a guy that. Um, they love they love both of them, and uh, you know it comes down to who wants to commit first and who decides to jump on board. And I, just in my opinion, I think Holstein is probably a little bit closer to making a decision than Arch is. Uh, even though Arch had a great visit to Alabama, I just don't. And Alabama feels like they have a really good chance with them. I don't think they're going to wait and tell Holstein, "Hey, you know, sorry, you can't commit right now." I think he can commit anytime he wants. Yeah, I do have Eli and Manning. No, Eli Manning, though. Two very talented kids, like you said, out of the boot there in Louisiana. <laughs> Going to be fun to follow the timing with each of these recruits. Arch Manning, maybe a bigger name at this point. And guys, we got to talk about Arch Manning. It's our job. So, uh, you know, please get in the comments. Let us know how you how you feel about him. Uh, but we will continue to cover Manning just the same as we have along uh, with Eli Holstein as well. Going to be fun to see who the next quarterback is line, you know, after Ty Simpson, after Jalen Milrow. Is it going to be Arch Manning, Eli Holstein? Going to have to wait and see there. But Alabama, some big quarterbacks in, some big players out of the state of Georgia in this weekend as well. Talking about some guys like Justice Haynes, Sammy Brown, Caleb Downs. These guys, some of them receiving offers this weekend as well. Talk about how these visits went, where Alabama stands in the recruitment with these players out of the Peach State. Yeah, you know, the thing about the spring is you try to get kids on campus, you know, throughout the entire spring. You don't just try to load them up all in uh, for the A day game. Uh, you know, you want to get kids on campus, you know, whenever you can. Um, you know, you just never know how things may work out. You know, kids may have a baseball uh, game, or they may have track, or they may be going to another uh, campus for their spring game. It's just, uh, you know, the, the biggest thing about spring is just at least getting kids on campus at least one time, and then you can get them back uh, during the summer. But you know, justice. Uh, this is a guy who is a Georgia legacy. His father played there, who was a walk-on uh, at Georgia, and I had a chance to speak to him about the trip. I mean, you know, they were really just blown away by, by everything. And, you know, they love the culture at Alabama, love what uh, Alabama is all about, you know, loves love the strength and conditioning program, and, uh, you know, just really love the coaching staff. I think they're really excited about getting back for an official visit a little bit uh, later down the road. I, I think it's still going to be a little tough uh, to get him out of the state of Georgia just because obviously he's an in-state kid. He's been heavily recruited by the Bulldogs for a really long time. And obviously his father played there. So he grew up going to to a lot of Georgia games. So it's going to be tough, but Alabama certainly made a strong impression on Justice Haynes this past weekend. And uh, you know they're going to be in it. They're going to be in it for, for a long time. So you never know what may happen uh, in this recruiting cycle. But then Caleb Downs, the number one safety in the country out of Georgia. We've talked about him uh, for a while. He visited Alabama last summer. He was also in Tuscaloosa uh, last year for the spring game. So he's been to Tuscaloosa several times and you know, certainly likes Alabama a lot. Obviously, the success in the defensive backfield uh, speaks volumes to him. And, you know, we had a chance to uh, to catch up with him. Uh, after his visit to Alabama, he had a pretty busy, busy weekend. He was at Alabama on Saturday, visited Ohio State on Sunday, but I had a chance to talk to him uh, late Sunday night about the visit to Alabama and just, you know, just another great trip. I mean, he really likes uh, what Alabama is all about, you know, loves the uh, secondary coaches and you know, definitely has high interest. I do think it ultimately comes down to Alabama and Georgia for him. Obviously, some other schools are in it, uh, Florida, Notre Dame. Uh, I think he likes Ohio State. Uh, Clemson has been in the mix as well. Uh, so those are some programs that he has high interest in. But in the end, I think it's a border war between Alabama and uh, and Georgia. And we we'll kind of have to wait and see how it all unfolds. I think he's very high on both programs right now. Uh, but then, um, you know, the third Georgia guy that I wanted to mention uh, that made a trip over to Tuscaloosa actually on Monday uh, was uh, – uh, Sammy Brown, the number one outside linebacker in the 2024 class from Jefferson High School in Georgia, made his uh, first visit to Alabama on Monday uh, with his father, with his younger brother. Uh, you know, really enjoyed the trip. He also received an offer from Alabama uh, during his visit. And this is a big kid, six foot two, 225 pounds. I had a great junior or not a junior season, a great sophomore season uh, before uh, before suffering a leg injury uh, late in the year, but you know, kind of 
gets it done on both sides of the football. But uh, Alabama's recruiting him on defense. He said he had a chance to spend a lot of time with uh, Joe Cox, the new tight ends coach, who's now his area recruiter. Also, uh, Alabama defensive coordinator Pete Golding. Really excited about getting back to Tuscaloosa. No favorites just yet. He says he's going to kind of go through the summer, enjoy some visits, enjoy some summer camps kind of go through his junior season and then really start to narrow things down. But uh, obviously Alabama is getting some top talent from the Peach State on campus, and um, you know, they're going to continue to do that over the course of the next few weeks. Keep in that like button for me as we continue on in the show tonight. I love talking about the state of Georgia because Alabama has had so many victories in the recruiting realm there. But let's go a little bit further down south, 305. Get into the Miami Heat a little bit. Talk about some of these guys in town this weekend as well. Miami, Fort Lauderdale, a little bit north there. Ruben Bain, highly talented defensive end, uh, was in town this weekend. I believe he recorded 29 and a half sacks as a junior. Talk about his recruitment a little bit and you know maybe touch on the wide receiver, Hakeem Williams, uh, who Coach Saban described as maybe a mini Julio Jones. These guys in from Miami, I, I heard they had a pretty good weekend. Absolutely. Uh, yeah, I talked to Ruben Bain actually uh, earlier today about his trip to Alabama. You know, he had another great trip. This was his second time visiting Alabama. Uh, also came to Tuscaloosa back in November. Definitely a lot of interest. I mean, he spent three days in Tuscaloosa, arrived on Friday, left on Sunday and got a chance to uh, to really spend some uh, some quality time with Freddie Roach, uh, Alabama's defensive line coach. Really got a chance to sit down with him. Watch, uh, watch, watch some film, go through the team meeting, go through position meeting. Uh, he really enjoyed that a lot. So he's got a really good connection with the Alabama coaching staff. Uh, you know, had a chance to sit down with Coach Saban and uh, you know get to know a little bit more about him and, and kind of how Coach Saban sees him uh, fitting in with the defense. But this is definitely a guy that Alabama is going after. They're pushing hard for. He's uh, measured in at six foot three, 254 pounds. Uh, during his uh, his weekend in Tuscaloosa, and you know, definitely somebody that uh, I think Alabama is going to be in it with for the long run. Now Miami, close to home, obviously, and uh, you know definitely has some family connections uh, with the Hurricanes, and they're they're putting the full court press on him to stay close to home. So in the end, I can kind of see it being an Alabama Miami uh, recruiting battle. Obviously, there's some other schools that are in it, like Auburn. Uh, likes Pittsburgh, likes West Virginia, uh, and there's some other f- programs that are in there as well. But uh, but in the end, I can kind of see this being a Nick Saban, Mario Cristobal uh, recruiting battle. And uh, I definitely think that Alabama is going to have a really strong chance to uh, potentially land him. But like I said, you know, going up against the Hurricanes, being a uh, uh, you know, being really connected with the program down there, you know, might be kind of tough. But another guy that uh, that you mentioned, Hakeem Williams. Yeah, people were kind of going off a little bit on Twitter when uh, when I said that Coach Saban compared him to Julio Jones. Everybody said, "Slow down, slow down." You know, nobody uh, really compares to Julio Jones, but Coach Saban kind of described him as a mini uh, Julio Jones, even though he's a you know, six foot four, two hundred and five pounds. Uh, but you know, we had a chance to uh, to catch up with Hakeem on Sunday after the trip to Bama, and you know he really loved it there. I mean, he came up with his mom, you know, had a lot of um, you know a lot of good things to say about Alabama. You know, loves what Alabama's been able to do with all these South Florida wide receivers who've come to Tuscaloosa and, and had just great careers, like Amari Cooper and you know, Jerry Judy, um, obviously Calvin Ridley as well. But uh, I think that Alabama is certainly going to be in the mix for him, he's going to come back for an official visit. Uh, he also is really high on, on Georgia, Florida State. I can kind of see those being the top three schools in his recruitment, but it doesn't seem like he's going to make a decision anytime soon, but definitely one of Alabama's top wide receiver targets uh, in this 2023 recruiting class. Yeah, 604, 604, excuse me, 205. Not not quite too many there for uh, the comparison on Julio Jones, but I like it. Hope to get at least shades of Julio Jones here if Hakeem Williams does come to Tuscaloosa. But some other notable names in town this weekend as well. Number one tight end in the country, Deuce Robinson. Jaden Wayne back in the, from the uh, Pacific Northwest. I think uh, we had Tamarian Parker in this weekend as well. Darian Gullett, some really big names. Visiting Nick Saban, visiting the Crimson Tide this weekend. Talk about their visits and where Alabama stands with some of these guys you know, who in this class do you see Alabama or in, out of those guys do you see Alabama being able to sign in this class? Well, yeah, I mean, I think Alabama was really excited to get Deuce Robinson back on campus. This was his second visit to Alabama, visited last summer. 
one of the best high school football players in the country, but also one of the best baseball players in the country. And yeah, there's a lot of, uh, you know, a lot of speculation that he's going to go really high in the baseball draft uh, next year. So that's something that a lot of people are, are going to be watching closely. Now he visited Alabama on Sunday, was also in town a little bit on Monday morning, uh, but he got a chance to go to Alabama's baseball game. And, uh, you know, definitely knows that he has an option to also play baseball in Tuscaloosa uh, for the Crimson Tide. So we hadn't had a chance to catch up with Deuce just yet. He's pretty quiet on the recruiting front. We hope to try to get something with him uh, in the next couple of days. But, you know, definitely somebody that Alabama, you know, really likes a lot. You know, he's a guy that they went and saw back in January. Uh during the uh, during the evaluation period, and uh, you know we'll kind of have to wait and see how that all unfolds with Deuce Robinson uh, moving forward. But you know, definitely somebody that Alabama is going to continue to recruit, and uh, and I think they're going to be in it uh, for the long run with him. Uh, Jaden Wayne, five star, rated as a defensive end, but a lot of schools are have been talking to him a lot about playing tight end as well, including Alabama. Uh, Alabama's tight ends coach Joe Cox, uh, first year uh, on the job in Tuscaloosa. All he's been talking to, to Jaden Wayne about is playing tight end. He wants him to play tight end so bad. Uh, he's six foot six, you know, two hundred and fifty plus pounds. He wants to play defensive end in college, but uh, you never know. He may end up being a tight end, and, and definitely something that uh, that he's open to. And you know, he really likes Alabama a lot. Named Alabama as his favorite prior to the visit. Said that Alabama continues to be uh, at the top of his list. He plans on coming back to Tuscaloosa probably sometime in uh, in June. Uh, I don't know if that's going to be for an official visit. May save that for uh, for the football season. So we'll kind of see how that all plays out. But you know, definitely somebody that uh, that Alabama fans are going to uh, continue to watch closely, and uh, we're going to continue to watch see what uh, ends up happening with him in Alabama, and, and also see if maybe he does decide uh, that he's going to play tight end. You know, we, this is a big year for defensive linemen for, in Alabama's recruiting class. We've talked about you know, just so many guys and we've always kind of considered Jaden Wayne a defensive line recruit for Alabama but you know, the more we kind of hear about it the more we kind of think maybe Alabama is looking at him more as a tight end than defensive end but at the same time he said uh, that he gets to make the that Alabama said that he can make the decision on what position he wants to play uh, in college but to Marion Parker in-state defensive lineman uh, from Central High School in Phoenix City. Uh, was also in town this past weekend. I think he had a great trip uh, to Alabama. I had a chance to uh, to catch up with him on uh, on Monday. Actually, on Sunday night. I think we talked to, we talked at like 1130 uh, on Sunday night after he got off work. But, um, but this is definitely a guy that uh, has continued to uh, show a lot of interest in Alabama. He's a big kid, six foot three, about 255 pounds. I think it's going to come down to Alabama and Georgia. I mean, these are you know the two programs that he's visited the most that he really likes a lot. Uh, he's not really in a rush to make a decision, uh, but definitely uh, you know I, I'm sure Alabama was excited to get him back uh, on campus this past weekend. Darian Gillette. I'm uh, yeah I don't know if I'm saying it. I'm probably saying it wrong, but uh, but we're going to go with Gillette right now. I like it. <laughs> it's not Gillette's, but it's Gillette. Um, so yeah, I think this is certainly a guy that Alex. Alabama really likes a lot. Um, and he's a three-star linebacker from uh, from Marlin, Texas. Uh, this was his first visit to Alabama. He received an offer from Alabama back in February, and they have continued to show a lot of interest in him. Continued to recruit him, and you know, from what I've told, you know, this is definitely a guy that they would take a commitment from. He looked really good uh, when he visited Alabama with his family this past weekend. And uh, I think we're going to be watching him pretty closely moving forward to see if uh, you know he's a potential guy that could end up in Alabama's recruiting class. But definitely somebody that has moved up Alabama's recruiting board over the course of the last uh, you know, month or two. And uh, definitely somebody that they would take a commitment from uh, in this 2023 class. Yeah, we got Darian Gillette. We got Brandon Ennis. When's Johnny Rounders getting to town? I love it. Uh, no, some some very talented names uh, in this past weekend. Some big names coming into town this weekend as well as we talk about the number one offensive tackle in the country, Caden Proctor, along with uh, rival top 100 defensive back in Malik Muhammad as well. Talk about what you expect out of these visits and where Alabama stands with these two at the moment. Yeah, I mean, it's you know always big to get uh, get some of these top kids on campus, especially ones that uh, you know haven't visited in a in a while. Uh, you know, Malik Muhammad did visit back for Junior Day back in January. I think Alabama is right at the top of his list. Could he potentially commit this weekend? It's possible. I mean, this is a guy that they're really pressing for. Uh, you know, the cornerback uh, at Texas that they uh, they've had 
very high interest in, and uh, he's developed a very strong relationship with the Alabama coaching staff. You're also going to have Caden Proctor, the number one offensive lineman in the country this weekend. Uh, you know, new Alabama offensive line coach Eric Wolford, uh, you know, has really been uh, you know attacking that one. You know, really trying to get him uh, to Alabama at least for for another visit. So they're going to get him on campus this weekend. Yeah. I don't know what's going to end up happening in his recruitment. Obviously, Iowa is a, a top contender for him being an in-state kid. He's visited Iowa uh, more than any other school. But uh, but Alabama, obviously, they've had a, a tremendous amount of success on the offensive line. And I think that um, Eric Wolford and him have really hit it off and developed a very strong relationship. He visited last summer, wasn't able to get to Tuscaloosa during the season. So this is a you know very big, much-anticipated visit uh, weekend for him. And then – Another big target that's going to be in town this weekend is Malik Bryant, the number one outside linebacker in this 2023 uh, recruiting class out of Jones High School in Orlando. He visited out, or he, excuse me, played at IMG Academy last season, then transferred back to Jones. So he's going to be back in his hometown for his senior season. He's going to be announcing a top four in May. Uh, I think Alabama's going to make the cut. I think Georgia's going to make the cut. I think Florida's probably going to make the cut. We'll see who else makes the cut. But, you know, those are, those are schools that he's very high on right now. Uh, but I think at Malik Bryant, you know, coming to Tuscaloosa this weekend for his very first visit to Alabama, they're going to have a chance to really, you know, blow him away because this is a kid that has always had high interest in the Tide. Now they're finally getting him on campus, and I think they're going to have a really good chance to uh, – Potentially land his commitment here down the road, but uh, no decision until uh, July for him. I know he's got a July date set, uh, so he's going to take those official visits, name that top four in um, uh, in uh, May, and then take those official visits this summer and make that decision. Guys, we begin to wrap it up tonight. Hit that like button one more time for me. Get in the comments section. We've talked about a lot of different recruits tonight. Let me know who you're most excited about, which recruit is your favorite. Started the show out with some quarterbacks, and we're going to have a lot more visitors throughout the rest of this spring here. But really want to get into it next week in depth. A-Day coming up just 11 days away now. Let's talk about some of the, the recruits coming into town. Just share a few names for me where, you know, maybe some of the Tides more uh, prominent recruits at this point guys are really interested in that will be in town for a day like i said we're going to go in depth next week but just kind of an early preview at a day 2022 you know like i said earlier i mean the biggest thing is just getting kids on campus you know through sometime during the spring and we've seen so many top recruits that have visited alabama for spring practice or maybe they've come in for uh just a day you know whether that's on a tuesday or, or friday afternoon so getting these kids on campus is huge but you know we're starting to see more Top recruits announced that they're going to be heading to Tuscaloosa for a day, including Richard Young, who's one of the best running backs uh, in the country uh, out of Lehigh, uh, Florida, uh, has visited Alabama a few times now and definitely one of Alabama's premier recruits in this recruiting class. Brandon Ennis, as we've talked about, as you mentioned earlier, um, number one wide receiver in the country, five-star recruit uh, out of uh, out of American Heritage High School uh, down in Florida. He's going to be making a trip to Tuscaloosa. This is actually – Brandon Ennis's first visit to Alabama, which is kind of shocking because Alabama has always been in that top two, top three for him. So you would kind of think he's been to Tuscaloosa before. The American Heritage kids, a lot of them have visited Alabama. Uh, obviously, Earl Little Jr. signing with Alabama uh, this past year. So uh, definitely uh, uh, definitely a school that has been very kind to Alabama uh, over, the, over the years. So they're really making a strong push for Brandon Ennis. So he's going to visit this uh, for the 8A game, and I think they're going to have a really strong chance to uh, to land him. He's a former Oklahoma commitment, but obviously a lot of schools strongly coming after him. And uh, he was in Ohio or at Ohio State uh, this past weekend for a visit. So you know, we're going to keep an eye on that. 2024, Desmond Ricks, number one cornerback in the country, going to be making a trip to Alabama next weekend. This is a kid that. Has Alabama and Florida State as the top two schools? Can Alabama create some separation and be that leader, that overall leader, after this uh, this trip he's got coming up to Alabama next weekend? So we'll see how that goes. Obviously, we're going to see a lot of in-state kids return to Tuscaloosa. Uh, I would imagine Peter Woods from Thompson. Uh, maybe we'll see Tony Mitchell come back. Obviously, uh, you know, some offensive linemen, Raquez McEldery, uh, his Georgia commitment, visited Alabama several times. He's going to be back in Tuscaloosa. Uh, Will Conformby, uh, local lineman from Tuscaloosa at Northridge High School, he'll be back on campus. Um, you know, we should see plenty of other top recruits in Tuscaloosa next weekend for A-Day, and we'll preview that next week. 
We certainly will, guys. So be sure to hit that bell so you can be in the know. Stay updated with us on our YouTube page. And like I said on Twitter as well, go ahead and with a follow at Andrew J. Bone, where you can keep the uh, the updates on there as well with these recruits coming into town for one more scrimmage in A-Day, of course, as well. As we wrap it up here tonight, Bone, just your final thoughts on these next couple of weeks as Alabama closes out spring practice and everything else going on in the world of recruiting. Yeah, I mean, you know, we're continuing to stay busy. I mean, there's something new just about every single day. Obviously, you know, you can hear my dog barking, having a uh, having a good time <laughs> out there. Uh, but, uh, you know, I think that, um, you know, as far as visits go, you know, things have been going really well. Obviously, not a lot of commitments just yet. Still just sitting on two commitments. I wouldn't be surprised if we see a few commitments happen, you know, maybe not this weekend, but maybe next weekend after the A-Day game. So we'll be staying pretty uh, pretty in tune with that. Always, you know, Obviously, we're waiting to see what's going to happen with Tyler Steen. Obviously, there's always some big news happening with the Alabama football program, as we saw uh, earlier today with uh, the Ajay Hall uh, news. And um, we'll just kind of have to wait and see what happens tomorrow. <laughs> always a crazy day in the world of Alabama football. And that's why you guys need to stay updated. So like I said, hit the follow there and hit the bell for us. So you can stay updated on Alabama football YouTube as well. For Andrew Bone, my name is Trey Entity. Thank you so much, guys, for joining us for this week of Alabama football recruiting. Drop us a comment on your way out tonight. But until next week, have a great night, everybody. Roll Tide.